My ducks, this is Mr. Swank. I'm trying to catch you up with the lecture component that you missed in class. Starting with chapter three, public fire protection, I will try to go as fast as possible. Do not bore you or to make sure you do not fall asleep, even at your own house in your pajamas. You ready? Here we go. We start with fire. Here's basically what happened. Very long time ago, we're talking 200 to 400,000 years ago, fire existed. We did not know how to create it, control it, function, or use it. Lightning strikes would happen in forests, in open fields, and cause this strike of power and cause fire to exist. It wasn't until years later where man learned how to control it. As is this photo. Um, so basically cavemen, were, they were the first to, to basically take fire, take it to their cave, use fire to cook, uh, to warm themselves. This is how it all began. Problem is, when man started creating fire, man-made disasters followed. Fire losses. Because there are so many things that were happening, this dates back to the Roman Empire, 6 AD. This is where the Bucket Brigade, you guys did this in classes and exercise. This is the very first fire department, 6 AD, a long, long time ago. Here's a picture here. Here's the corp individuals. Um, as you can see here, here's uh, bucket brigades. This is exactly how they put fires out. They had ladders. Uh, these were actually knights of the Roman Empire designated and assigned for fire protection of the town. Bucket brigade, we did this in class. This is literally how they used to put fires way, way, way back then. There were no fire engines, there was no fire hose. Okay, you form lines just like this and you put fires out. Today, there's actually teams, muster teams that uh, do competitions if you're ever interested. It's called Bucket Brigade Competition. Great Fire of London. Okay, so now I'm going to get into some big fire loss areas. Huge fire, 1966. Here's what happened. Destroyed a crap load of people, buildings, everything. Because of this, they came out with regulations. New firefighting methods and the existence of fire insurance companies. Here's all the uh, big fires because of these things here. Look at this fire here. It cost 300 people to die. 100,000 homeless, 17,400 buildings destroyed. This is a great, crazy, crazy fire. This one here burned for three days. 1871, so although it's at almost to the 19th century, you're still talking about uh, big fire. They did not know how to control it, really, how to fight it. Destroyed a lot of homes, a lot of people dead. So what happened basically because of these big, big fires is the result of fire prevention. Back in this picture here, where I go back to, oops, where I go back to these big fires, what was happening is that there was homes that were closely built together. And for example, the chimneys right here, these chimneys are made out of wood. Um, and so of course, here's their roofing material. And so it would catch on fire. So because of uh, these big fires, codes came out saying no more um, combustible materials made in the house. Okay. Here's all your big fires. Um, here is San Francisco, 1906, huge, huge fire. Okay. So basically all these major catastrophes already lined out in uh, Chicago and London, these big, big ass fires, right? Killed a lot of people, destroyed a lot of buildings and caused chaos. So what happened is after every disaster, we, as in mankind, would try to come up with ways to not um, make sure it happens. Okay, so fire prevention and then improving techniques, fire suppression. How do we put this fire out quicker, better? How do we get better ladders? How do we get better equipment? That is how the fire service evolved to what it is today. Okay, one of the things that did happen was you had these fire insurance companies. So if you were living house to house, or if you were in uh, Pleasant Grove's area and you wanted to make sure your house was protected from fire, you would go to one of these companies, purchase what is called a fire mark, put that on the front of your door, and because you had that on your list, had that in front of your house, that meant that you were protected. That meant that they would come out and put your fire out. So let's say you went to Commercial Union, this place right here, and you bought fire protection. If another company came out and saw that this is commercial, they're not going to put it out. So basically you paid, this is the very, very first way to pay for fire protection. Okay. 
Also, if your house was on fire and you did not have one of these marks, they would let your house burn. Okay. Here is another example of fire marks. Um, it became really competitive because um, you. This was a way for. This was basically privatization. If you had this again on your property, it meant you were safe, somewhat. Okay, I'm not going to read this. You can read this in your book. But this is how the first fire departments became established. Uh, volunteer fire departments as well. Uh, the biggest thing to take from this is that we had to develop more and more and better equipment because the capacity was greater. We had more people dying. We had uh, more population of people. Uh, the siphona here is the very first fire pump. Basically, there are these two pistons that run in here, and they went um, side by side like that. And it basically caused this water pump, and it had this little gooseneck here where water could come out. Okay, that was the first, first uh, hand pump. Coast companies, as you can see, through the pictures, the development happened where we're like, okay, we have a pump. How do we get it? How do we get it from point A to point B? How can we get it to pump more water? How can we get it to take more water? How could we add hose? So all these developments started happening. Here's our first steam pumper. As you can see, we went from a cart to a steam pumper. Okay, so there was coal that would go in here and it would operate the pump and basically give you enough water to pressure to put the fire out. Because it's called steam, steam pumper that remind, remember this picture, it's gonna come into play later. Okay, now here's horse-drawn steamers. Before it became motorized, well, here, right here, you can see that there's a dude that sat right here, and then here's the harness for the horse. Okay, um, steamer connection, um, the, that term goes to a hydrant. Okay, horse, hydrant, here we go. Clydesdales, they use really, whoa, what's going on? Sorry, I'm at work. There's a couple of distractions. Okay, let me uh, refocus here. Uh, the horse-drawn steamer, uh, we have actually a fire station downtown, station number four, Alhambra and L Street area, where you could still see the uh, the, the bolts um, hanging from the ceiling where the, the horses would be housed in there because this is before we had fire engines, okay? We had to pull the, the steamer using horses to get to the fire. It's a pretty trick. Ladder company, here's our first ladder company. This dude here did just roam the streets. He did not have um, any water. This is all ladders, and these are all ladders made of wood. Chemical wagon, now as, again, we progressed into the, getting into the industrial age, we had things that would catch a fire that water would not put the fire out, so you had to have chemicals, mainly CO2, to put out the fire. This is a soda and water acid base. Okay, internal combustion. Here's the very first fire engine here. Um, so you're still using the steamer right here to operate the pump. This was attached to this chassis, basically the first little truck. Okay, and as you can see from these pictures, I'm not going to explain each one, but you can see the modern modernization from each um, apparatus. Okay, improvements happened from here to here and so on. Okay, we're going to go into fire uh, service symbols. Um, really important, we're all about symbology. If you look at stickers uh, on our cars, that it means that you belong to something or it's a group affiliation. Fire service symbols, here's our Maltese cross. This is what it, very, what it first looked like. Dates back to a very, very long time ago during the Crusade era when, I'm not going to read all this, the Knights of Malta um, basically were um, fighting and here's a Maltese cross right here and so the story behind this is um, they were attacked and a lot of them were, were killed burned alive how it happened was the the opposing forces would grab these like water balloons fill it full of uh, naphtha which is just like this fuel mix throw it at them it would explode on their uh, armor and then they would light them on fire and they all burned so there became this this, this tie between fire, Maltese, Knights of Malta, and so they would award this as now a badge of honor because you were associated with fire or the fallen from a fire. 
Obviously, it also grew. So here's our modern Maltese cross, same thing. This looks a whole lot different than that. But this, these are our roots. This is where this all came from. Okay, so the Knights of Malta. St. Florian, um, here's the one saint, the story behind this is St. Florian took a, a bucket of water and, uh, and was able to put the fire out and save the entire town. So she became he, um, our saint, he bid. I'm not going to read it.